He's alive and well. His truth still stands. And his name is Jesus.
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God You are 
moment, we just want to agree in prayer with you. As the prayer team is coming up to the altars, in the front, in the aisles, and in the balcony, we want to agree with the authority of the Word of God over our lives. And if there's something that you need, as the body of, of Christ, whether you're in your, on your seat and those are at the front, let's just believe God that He will never let us down, that He started a good work in us will bring it to completion. And maybe you don't need anything today. But I know there's one answer that we have. And His name is Jesus Christ. And whether you're on up on the mountain or down in the valley, He's still God and He changes not. So Lord, we stand in agreement this morning.
thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. But if we deserve to be here, we wouldn't be here. But because you are a good God and that you so it fit, you made us and restored us back to yourself. As the children, as the body of Christ all around the world, we say glory to God. Amen and amen, church. Say hi to the person next to you as you take your seat. Well, good morning, Res Life. It is good to be here with you today and to be able to preach to you from God's trusted word. Uh, what a privilege this morning as I was driving over. I'm just like, you know, I've, I've preached here, I think it's probably been 20 plus years. I've never been more joyful about getting to make this drive and to preach this morning than I was this morning because we have a great faith in the Lord to base our life on and the culture that we live in. We have the privilege of knowing His Word. We are a blessed people. And so today, as I get to preach to you from the Lord's Word, it's a great honor. So I'm so thankful for this opportunity. And I want to just report to you in the last month, month and a half, I've been in, um, I've been in Michigan a few times for sure, but I've been in North Carolina, I've been in Pennsylvania, I've been in Florida, 
been in different states and able to preach the word of the Lord. And I just want to report to you that I want to specifically pick the age of 30, okay? I don't want to leave anybody out, but 30 years of age and younger, I am just seeing a hunger in their heart to hear the word of God and to know the word of God. And to me, to me, that is so, is so fun. I mean, when you preach and kids and teens want to come forward and pray, it's just like, wow, I, I remember in North Carolina, I was preaching and I just walked up and said, I sensed that. And that's all I had to say. And just kids and teens and, and young adults were coming forward to pray. And I was standing there going, wait, I didn't even really give an invitation. But it was, it was neat to see uh, how the Lord is moving among you. So this morning, I want to even say to those of you who are here, uh, in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have, if you're 30 years of age and younger, would you just stand up for me for a second? I just want to address you for a second. First of all, we celebrate you being here. Yeah, stay, stay up just a second. Stay standing just a second. So even this morning, as I'm speaking, if you go, man, I just sense the Lord doing something in my heart and spirit. It has nothing to do with me as a preacher, trust me. It's the spirit of the Lord that's moving among your generation, and I celebrate it. And I, I'm so thankful for you today. Can't, you came to church online. You, you might be laying in bed, but you're still 30 and younger. And I just want to say I'm so excited that you've opened your heart up to hear the word of the Lord, and we all are grateful that we're here together to worship the Lord. So again, thank you for being here. Give him another hand. That's awesome. You may be seated. So to get this message started, uh, we're kicking off this series. So I'm asking for a friend, which we all really know what that means. (laughs) And so as we kick it off, I'm going to answer a couple of questions today, and the questions related more to parenting. Um, After the service, Lawrence is going to share with you some of the specific questions you asked and you brought up that are related to very specific topics are addressed in a little book that we just produced at Winning at Home. Uh, It's not just me, it's the whole staff there. Some very trained professionals wrote into this book and that'll be talked about at the end. So if you say, well, I'd like more details, that'll be there. But today I really feel it's my responsibility as a pastor, as a speaker, as a preacher of the gospel of Christ, to bring you some just foundational truths that I believe are found in God's word. And I have three simple truths I'm gonna share with you about just ways to make sure you raise your children in a way that they will honor and bring glory to the Lord. Because ultimately your children will make that decision. My, my parents don't make my decisions for me anymore. They're no longer on the earth. And so I have to be responsible for my decisions. And your child, even the one that's in the nursery right now, will someday reach that age. And I want to give you some principles that go past time. They're eternal because they're from God's Word. And the way I was thinking about preparing for this message, I sit in my office, as I've told you before, and sit on a little stool. And I'm going to ask all of you to join me. And just for a second, I want you to be the age of 13. So we're all in the room. We're all 13. I'm giving some of you a little bit of time to get there. (laughs) I want you to think about the way you thought. I want you to forget a lot of the things that you have learned in years of time. I want you to remember your hair used to grow. I want you to recall And you're in seventh or eighth grade, I want you to recall how intimidated some things would feel. I want you to remember how there were certain parts about even the way you looked that you were a little embarrassed. Just go there. You're 13. Very shapeable. Very, very open to thoughts and ideas. So you woke up this morning. You're 13. It's 2023. You can't go back and live in the 1960s. It's 2023. You woke up, you haven't been awake long, and you grabbed this. It's what you do when you're 13. You let let's just pick an app. Let's just say you pick TikTok. You bring it up. It begins to tell me what's cool, what people are doing, what culture says about me. What's popular in our culture? 
oh, I should wear that, or I should act that way, or I should live that lifestyle. Mm, this is the cool trend. Oh, this is trending. That's got to be hip. And without realizing it, I'm being shaped by what I'm seeing. And I want you to know what's coming up on the screen. I just want to make you aware. It's not accidental. It's intentional. And if you're sitting here and you're 50 and you're going, yeah, but I wouldn't pay attention to that. I said you're 13. When you get 50 and 60, you're not as easily swayed by some of the things you just see because you're a little older, a little more mature with some of those things. But when you're 13, you're like, yeah. So this morning, I'm going to say to all of us as 13-year-olds, apply the three principles that I believe are eternal principles about training up your children, guiding them in the ways of the Lord, and let's see where the Lord takes it. And the first point's a very simple point. I want you to understand the points are coming up on the screen. The first point's very simple. It's this, our identity must first be found in Jesus Christ. You're 13, hear that again. Your identity must first be found in Christ. Not your sexuality, not your gender, not your last name, not everything that you think about yourself. First of all, you need to understand you belong to God. He created you in His image for His glory. So I'm sitting the other day uh, at my house. I'm looking. It's, it's early morning. I'm looking out over a little area I like to look out over, and I'm reading Psalm 24. Psalm 24, this is the verse. This is the words that I read. I want you to just see it with me. The earth is the Lord's. And everything in it, the world and all who live in it, that's you. That's you. You belong to him. Now, you may be sitting or online and you go, no, I don't. I've never asked him into my life. I, I understand that. You need to make that decision to be fully in the Lord's care and guidance. Guide it. But you're still his kid. It's just like... I, I've been through a time in my parenting life when I had children who said, I don't want you to be my dad. But it didn't mean that I wasn't their dad. I was because I am their father. Alan, Josh, Christina, and Anna can say I'm not their dad, but I am. You are God's kid. He made you. He created you. His word says everything in this world belongs to him. That includes you. Start there knowing, oh, I belong to God. Psalm 127 says he made us in his image. I brought this morning with me just for the purpose of illustration, and I'm going to stand very still here so the video can come into this. I have some Play-Doh in my hands. You're going to be the Play-Doh today, and just for the sake of the illustration, this obviously isn't God, but I'm using this. If this is God, and you are a human being made in His image, the Play-Doh, God says, I made you in my image. Watch this. He stamped Himself into your life. You're made to love and create and worship Him. That's how God made you. He printed Himself into you. Over time, sinful behaviors... We start reshaping ourselves. We decide, I don't really like that. I, I don't, I don't want to follow God's ways. I, I want to do my own thing. I want to mold myself in my own shape and image. And you look and you go, well, I, don't, I don't see the imprint of God there. Right. Because we misshape ourselves. We make destructive choices. We do things that pull us away from the Lord and we come before him and we say, Father, will you forgive me? I have sinned. Will you come and restore me to what you made me to be? And he prints himself into your life and says, yes. 
we just shared the Easter message. It's the message of restoration and repentance and healing and hope. And today, our world, without knowing it, they can't see it because they've been blinded by the God of this age. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Satan has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever. They can't see the importance of this stamping the image of Christ on our life. But today you have the privilege of hearing his word and of knowing, wow, God made me for his glory to bring honor to him, to bring glory to his name. That's why you're on the earth. When you're 13, frankly, that's pretty hard to see. If I go back at 13, I could remember sitting in a service just like this and pastor saying some of these words, and it made sense to me. I would have listened, and I would have went, oh, that's good. I, I like that. That makes sense. But I got to tell you, at the age of 13, we went outside, and me and my buddy started doing our thing, and I got to be honest with you and tell you, I didn't think about it a lot anymore. At 62, I'm reaching a point where I realize pretty much all I do for the Lord the rest of my life is all that really matters. It's not about me. It's not about what I, I would maybe want. It's about honoring his name. It's pretty simple. And the more I see that, the less of Dan there really is. And the less of Dan there is, the more God can be glorified. I couldn't get all that at 13, but I say it today because I want those of you who are parents, to know that teaching your children they're made in God's image and letting them know they're part of the fullness of this earth is something that if you plant it in their minds, those seeds that get in there will grow and sprout in their own thinking. And I got to tell you, standing here today, I have not been a perfect father. I have a daughter, I think she's even in service right now. Had one was watching online this morning. I have two boys as well. They saw me lose it. They saw me get angry at times. I, I shouldn't have got that angry. I was wrong. They saw me be dead sure about something, and later on, I, I realized I was wrong. And you know what's amazing to me? All four of my children, by God's grace, all glory to Him, they're all serving the Lord right now. It's been tumultuous getting there. That didn't happen from the offset. It didn't happen just easy. There's been some real pain through it all. Here's the beautiful part to me. God was able to penetrate even this father's failures and reach my children. And I want to give some hope to a parent today who is sitting here and you go, well, Dan, Dan my children aren't following in the ways of the Lord and they aren't seeking him and they've lost that printed image that, that I believe at one point they had in their life. Yeah, we're broken. And we're in a world that's tick-tocking them to death. And I've come to say to you today, the Word of God is solid and secure and strong and eternal. And I stand here today as a father who goes, man, I didn't get that as a 30-year-old dad. And time has worn me out. Parenting wore me down. I was weary in the journey. I wanted to walk away from the ministry. And now, standing here, like I said, I got, I got more of a fervor to preach than I've ever had in my life. I'm not making that up. Like, I can't wait to when I get to get preach again. And the reason is because the Lord has shown me, it's not about you, Dan. It's about me. Teach your children to put their confidence in me. You're going to fail them. You're going to mess up. You're going to do things you shouldn't do. Teach them to follow me. I don't fail. Teach them to follow me. I know them best. I will guide their ways. You say, but damn, my kid's in nursery. I know. I know they don't fully understand it, but you can already be praying, Lord, bless this little child. May they grow up to know you as their hope and eternal. I can guide them some, but Lord, please, this is your child before it's my child. Train them that way. And part of that means, from my own personal testimony, going through some pain. Went through pain as a kid growing up. I lived in a home that was not perfect. And then I moved into a house with Jane, and I thought we'd probably raise a perfect family, and we did not. 
And I want to show you the second point today in real life and real time of how it, I believe, is something we all can learn as parents. Learn it as people as well. But today I'm specifically addressing that question of, you know, what do we do? What are the top keys for raising our children? And here's the second point in that. Life is about obedience to God, not earthly success. This is, a, this is a message that you need to make sure you're teaching to your children, listen to me carefully, by the way you live. If they see you chase earthly success, but talk about how God, obedience to God is so important, but don't see that lifestyle. If they see you chasing the things of this world, attaining the things of the, if that's your God, your children are going to go, your children are going to say, this message doesn't line up. And letting them know life is about obedience to God, even through the trials. Even through the trials. And I want to use one of the verses that we claim a lot. We love the verse. I want to put it in its proper context. The verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. Probably many of you can quote it right now. But I want to take you to Jeremiah 29, 10. Because I want to tell you what the verse actual meaning is. Jeremiah 29, 10, there's a story that's happening. There's two prophets, two preachers, if you will. One is telling the Israelites one thing, and one is telling the Israelites another. We just sang about this, by the way. We just sang a call, a song called Egypt, and it's about getting free out of the, out of the, the strain and the slavery of the, the terrible land back to Back to the land of Israel. We just sang about it. So these two prophets, let's say you're the Israelites and you've just been taken to slavery in Egypt. You don't know how long you're going to be there. It's happening in real time. So you've been captivated. You've been pulled aside. You've been taken to, to, to the Egyptian bondage. And you as Israelites are being abused and mistreated by the Egyptian people. That's where we all are this morning. Hanani, this preacher, comes to the Israelites and says to them, hey, guys, don't worry. We're not going to be here long. This is going to pass really quick. Don't sweat it so bad. Not a big deal. Hang in there. We'll be out of here soon. We'll be back to the promised land. Jeremiah, the one who the book is written by, said to the Israelites, Hanani is not telling you the truth. Hannah and I is not telling you the facts. The facts is you're going to be here 70 years. I want you to plant your crops here. I want you to build your barns here. I want you to prepare to be here for a while. Re have kids here. Some of you won't ever leave this place. Now, which of those two messages do you think the Egyptians uh, would probably, uh, Israelites, I should say, who are in Egypt, which one do you think they'd rather hear? Hannah and I saying, it won't be long, or Jeremiah going, long time. Of course, Hannah and I, because we live in the days of Amazon Prime. We want what we want when we want it. And Jeremiah writes, this is the verse just before one of your favorites. Jeremiah says, this is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed in Babylon. Whoa. Whoa. Longer than I've already lived. When 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to the place. That's the context of Jeremiah 29, 11. You're going to be in this place of waiting. You're going to be in this place of pain and suffering and sacrifice for 70 years so that I can. Here comes the verse 11. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, because I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Wait, what? Wait, wait, your plans are for me to wait 70 years? Correct. But I want... Correct. Plans to prosper. Wait, wait. Lord, you mean waiting 70 years is actually prospering me? Correct.
my years as a parent that were painful have been some of the greatest years of my life. My deepening in the Lord, it's ridiculous. If you'd ever told me that I would be a dad who would not worry, I'm, I come from a long line of gifted worriers. If you'd told me there'd be a time that I would sit in my house and something not be good in my family and I wouldn't worry about it, I would have said, how do I get there? And I will tell you, it was in my 70 years. I don't worry about my children. There may be circumstances I don't like, but I don't worry because I'm going to trust them fully to the Lord. And I'm telling you, I'm not just saying that. God has done something in the dude y'all are looking at. He did it. I did not do it. I don't know how he pulled it off, but he did. Because he was prospering me. Listen to me. Anything that you face in life that draws you closer to Jesus is prospering you. Let me tell you what the other place brings. When things are just rocking and rolling and everything's the way I want it and, and it's like I don't even have to try and it's just falling in my hands. Yeah, Let me tell you what happens in this place. We become complacent. Well, you know, I just come see, come say. Everything comes to me. I don't know. I, I'm just a good guy. My Savior, his name was Jesus. He didn't live this life. Pick the pot on, spot on the stage about as far from that. He lived this life of hardship, suffering, pain, all for us. All so that we could have eternal life. And so sometimes when I'm in a place of pain, in a place of hardship, in a place of trial, I go, oh, wait a second. This is what my Savior went through. I guess the only way I can really understand more about him is to live through some of it. And it's in this place that I can preach the message I am preaching to you this morning. I could not have preached this message 30 years ago because I had not reached the level of maturity that I believe the Lord has allowed me to get to today because I've been willing to seek him and trust him even in the deep trials. And I challenge you today, if you're in the middle of a circumstance, you say, I don't like this. Let me just say something to you. If you have a 13-year-old, they're watching how you're handling it. You got a five-year-old seeing you go through a real traumatic thing when you've lost your job. He's watching how much you trust the Lord and will walk with him and let him guide you to an even better place in your life through this. Pretty strong words. I personally have experienced it. And I have a piece this morning that's ridiculous. Does it mean everything goes my way? Nope. Does it have to? because I want to grow deeper in the Lord God Almighty. Now, let me tell you why I believe this is so important. I believe the culture we're living in today, I'm a positive person. I love life. Have a ball. Have a ball in life. But the culture, to me, seems to be spiraling downward. Those who are steady in the solid in the Lord and in His Word are the ones who are going to stand the test of time. And I want to be steady for what is coming. And as a minister of the gospel of Christ, he has been laying on my heart, teach this to my people. The Bible even talks about there will be some who choose one way, some who choose another. I'm calling you today to go deeper in God Almighty. You're going to need to be to stand strong for him. And your kids need to see that, and they need to be solid and steady in the Lord themselves. And watch what the verse said. When you've done the time with the Lord and he's preparing you to prosper you, plans for hope and for a future, look at what Jeremiah 29, 12 says. It says, then, then I will call on him and I will come and pray to him and I will listen to him. In other words, God is looking for all of us to turn to him. Look at the action. Look at the verbs in there action. God's not looking for followers who go, yeah, I know he's there. I'm good. 
No, he's looking for followers who seek him daily. And notice that last part is my favorite when he says, I will listen to you. Somebody watching right now online, um, you didn't actually come this morning because you didn't want to be in the house here with all the people and just makes you uncomfortable. Or is somebody here that, that you don't trust or don't like or, or whatever it is, your reason for not being here, you say, but Dan, if I call to him right now, would, will he hear me? I, this is not my opinion. His word says he listens to you. <laughs> The God of the universe is listening to you today. Call to him. 13-year-old, call to him. You say, but Dan, I don't know. I've got this situation. I've got these friends and they're bullying me. Call to him. Like give him a chance to give you some guidance that you don't even know exists. His ways are higher than our ways. He has paths that he can take you on. You don't even know exist because he's God. And he's got you today. I have experienced what I'm talking about. This is, this is a personal message for me. He has walked me through things that I go, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. And I get to the other side and go, that had to be God because Dan couldn't do that. And all of you here today have a circumstance in your life. I don't know what it is, but you got something in your life. You go, I don't know how to handle this. Give it to God. I'm not saying that as a little preacher phrase. I'm telling you, actually try it. Then, then call on him and come to him and pray to him. He'll listen. He doesn't lie. His word is truth. Talk to him. You say, but Dan, I've done that. I've done it for 10 years and he hasn't done anything. The Israelites were 70. So you only got 60 years left. In other words, be persistent. We call it at our office, sometimes when we're dealing with the issue, we call it, let's persistently pray. Not just, a, okay, God, I'm laying this in your hands and go away and forget. Persistently pray. And then the third point, very simple. I want all parents in here to know that children are ultimately responsible for their own actions. <laughs> I'm just telling you, some parent in here needs to hear this today because your kid is 40 and you still think you got to cover everything. And you're worn out. And you need to release it to the Lord. And you need to get yourself in a healthier place with the Lord. Because you've started to question even your own faith because you're worn out with your kids. You say, Dan, you seem to be speaking from experience. Correct. <laughs> Went through things that made me want to bail got to be honest. Had times I would have come here 10 years ago, eight years ago to preach. I remember my daughter who's here today, praise the Lord in heaven. My daughter who's here today left on a Friday. I was preaching. I remember, I remember watching her drive out of the parking lot at our office complex. And I remember I was preaching at Res Life that Sunday morning. And I got here and I preached. I don't remember what I said, but I must have made it through it. But my heart was heavy. And the Lord is faithful. And the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way they, I want to say this word really loud, should go. Does not say will go or guaranteed to go, gonna go. Parent said go. Doesn't say any of that. Train up a child in the way they should go. Then it's their decision if they do. My daughter Anna came to church this morning because she decided to be here. I didn't decide it for her. She decided it. She's uh, late 20s. No longer <laughs> does she do it because daddy told her to because she's responsible for her own life. Someday when this life is over, she will stand before God Almighty and she won't be able to say, well, my dad's covering this part. No. She answers for her life. And that little baby you're picking up in nursery today someday will answer for their life. You won't. I have failed. I don't know where you are, Anna, but I've failed you. But God never did. 
It's why you came back to him. Because you've discovered him for yourself. You didn't hang on my coattails. You've discovered him for yourself. Wherever you are, I'm looking like I know where you are. I have no idea where you are. And today I say to you, parents, go and teach these principles to your children and then release them. And I'm sorry to say this, there probably will be some kids who um, don't do that and make those decisions, maybe even while you're alive. I have friends who have gone on to be with the Lord and their kids actually turn back to the Lord because of that. Trust God. Teach the biblical principles. Leave it in the Lord's sovereign hands. I'm going to close this message different than first service. I'm going to invite people, parents, those of you online, you may just maybe sit up in the bed. I want you to take some posture. <laughs> I'm saying however it works for you. Take some posture that says, I pause, Lord, to recognize you're a God over my life. I'm part of your world. So I'm going to take a moment. In just a moment, I'm going to have us all stand, and then I'm going to invite you. If you'd like to be covered in a closing prayer, I'm going to pray over you. If you are in the balcony, you can just stand. If you're here in the bottom, you can come forward. If you'd like, you can stand. But if the Lord has spoken to you in an area of your life as a parent, as a person, and maybe here today, there's someone who says, oh my goodness, I didn't realize I was part of God's plan and I need to accept him as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to pray for you as well. So you may please stand. And I'm going to just ask a blessing over you as I close out more portion of the service. If the Lord has spoken to you, um, those of you who are here, be willing, would you just stand with me? Everybody standing, please, for just a moment. If the Lord has spoken to you in your spirit and you say, Dan, I would just love to lay my life again at his feet. I'd love to have that fresh imprinting of the Lord. As a parent today, maybe you're saying as a parent today, I need God's guidance. I'm going to invite you to come and just kneel, stand right along the front if you'd like to. It's your call. Those of you in the balcony, in just a moment, I'm going to look up at you and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. But those of you down on the lower part, if you want to come forward and stand around the altar, please do. Yeah, just come on. Just stand around the altar. I'm going to pray a blessing over you as parents and over you as people. I love it. Bringing your kid with you. I love it. Let's take a moment to silence your heart before the Lord. If the Lord says to your spirit, go be prayed for, I want you to come and stand here. I'm going to wait a moment. People keep coming. So, David, if you would just play, that'd be great. As the bottom is coming and just keep coming, just keep walking, fill up the aisles, that's fine. Up in the balcony, I'm going to have those of you who would want to just raise your hand. Would you just raise your hand in agreement as I pray this prayer? If you are asking the Lord to guide you in the area, I see your hands. Thank you. And probably some of you are accepting the Lord. Thank you. There'll be some guidance and a little bit of what you need to do to take a next step. But I want to pray a blessing over all of you as people, as parents. Keep coming. Keep coming. You're good. Lord God, today, I just lay this group of people before you. We're needy. We're simple people who are broken. We're humbled to be in your presence. You're an everlasting God. You're an eternal God. We're just temporary. And I pray peace over these parents who have come forward and those in the balcony who have raised their hands. Lord, they're asking for wisdom in their home. Some of them were dealing with a situation that literally they do not know how to answer. I pray in the powerful name of Christ, you would literally give them a thought or an idea that they go, that has to be the Lord. That's not even in my mind. A fresh anointing, a fresh guidance, a fresh spark of peace in their home and their family. I ask God that you would be with one who has come 
maybe sitting up in their bed or staying in the balcony who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we confess our sins together. We ask you to forgive us our sins. Receive us as your child. We thank you for being the God who loved us even when we couldn't see we're unlovable. And yet you love us and give your life for us. So thank you. And I pray today your peace and grace over us all. I ask you to guard every child that's represented out in the children's ministry in the nursery. Jesus, in the culture we're in, those kids need angels or protection around them. Would you provide that even today? Surround them with your care and your love. Let these parents be diligent to teach these biblical principles and then ultimately trust you with their child's life. Be with wayward children today. I ask in the name of Christ, you would bring them back to you, Heavenly Father. Let them look even today into this beautiful day and world we live in. Look up to the sky and see their creator. Call them back to you, Jesus. We give you ourselves this morning. We humbly tell you that we can't do it without you. And we love you today. And I give you these parents. I give you these people. I give you our lives. And I thank you for your goodness to us. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. Thank you for praying. You may go back to your seats.